Let's return to one of our top stories this morning, the Chernobyl anniversary. 30 years on from the worst nuclear disaster in history, and large swathes of land remain uninhabitable. The impact on human health is still being felt and remains poorly understood. Those who survived and live on in the affected areas are unsure what illnesses are actually linked to the radiation. And now Chernobyl's children have children of their own. Clara Cragg examines the lingering effects of the nuclear accident. 600,000 people participated in the cleanup effort after the Chernobyl disaster. This is one of several monuments in their honour. Ivan Vitkovsky was one of these liquidators. He worked at the reactor itself. We first met him five years ago when he'd been diagnosed with radiation-induced damage to his brain and nervous system. Today, he's lost the last of his hair and is thinner than ever, but he says his condition has stabilised. Since I've been in treatment, I've got a little bit stronger. And while I used to pass out, suddenly, three or four times a year, lately it's just once or twice. Ivan still lives in Narolia, in what's known as the zone of voluntary evacuation, contaminated but officially still just about safe to live in. Though the zone that's still deemed unsafe for human habitation is just across the river, Ivan says the water flows fast enough that it's okay to swim and even fish in it. What worries him, though, is that the very big dose of radiation he caught back in 1986 may have affected his granddaughter. My granddaughter has very similar symptoms to mine. Apparently without any reason, or maybe it's at moments of stress, she just passes out, just like that. I strongly suspect she's inherited my condition because her symptoms are really exactly like mine, though of course we hope it will just pass. Alessia is nearly five. Doctors said she may have a form of epilepsy and put her under observation. They didn't ask about her grandfather's health. Lately, though, she seems better. She hasn't passed out for several weeks and enjoys playing in the woods outside her house. She also, unprompted, told us this. Mushrooms absorb particularly high levels of radiation, but local traditions die hard, especially when imported food is expensive. Alessia's mother, Natalia, says she cleans and cooks the mushrooms extra thoroughly to reduce the danger, but she believes the radiation is in her blood anyway. It's passed on from generation to generation. My father was contaminated, I'm contaminated, and now so is my child. It's a sort of inheritance. Since the family still live in a contaminated area, it's hard to determine whether Alessia's ailments are inherited. At the state-run Centre for Radiation Medicine in the regional capital, Gomel, researchers rule out any such possibility. Among the children of liquidators, or those who were evacuated from the worst-hit areas and grew up in clean areas, there is no evidence of their inheriting radiation-linked diseases. And even among those descendants of liquidators who still live in contaminated areas, we see no sign of genetic damage. Doctors at this high-tech centre argue that fear of radiation leads to psychosomatic symptoms. So the message here is very much that Belarus has the dangers under control and tests will catch any illnesses early. Everyone who lives in contaminated areas is screened for radiation once a year. Result 0.007 millisieverts. That's as low as it can be for this patient's height and weight. The maximum recommended dose in Belarus is one millisievert per year. Above that, we put people under observation. In the past year, we've tested 126,000 people and found of those, only 31 individuals were above that limit. Across the border in Ukraine, though, research on genetics has yielded results that seem to challenge the Belarusians' optimism. Irina Ilyenko's department carries out genetic analysis of blood samples from former liquidators and their families. So we inject the sample of nucleic acid into this card. The results, she says, are unequivocal. We've already started publishing findings that show systemic genetic damage. 
So inheritance of damaged genetic material is highly probable. Regardless of where a person lives, there is a clear risk of inheriting various different pathologies. Back in Gomel, Belarus, young people in this trendy bar say it's obvious to them that people in their generation are inheriting illnesses linked to Chernobyl, whatever the authorities may say. Confidence in those guys is very low, generally speaking. No one believes the official statements anymore. I'm afraid to have children here. People I know who have kids, they're just back and forth from the hospital all the time. The hospital is like a second home. It wasn't like that before. Nevertheless, life goes on. Nearly one and a half million people live in Gomel region, the worst affected part of Belarus, and the birth rate here is actually higher than the national average.